Good evening, friends. So at the outset, I thanks Dr. Umesh Khanna and Mumbai Kidney Foundation team for giving me the opportunity to decide uh, to discuss about the setting up of the dialysis unit. It is not a very uh, uh, interesting topic, <laughs> but uh, as you discuss and discussed by the seniors also that the dialysis is your bread and butter in your practice. So you have to know something about how to set up the dialysis unit. So outline of my talk is site selection and infrastructure, equipment and consumable needed for the dialysis unit, how many staffs and training program for the staff, the market analysis and financial planning, the legal and regulatory requirement of the dialysis unit, the patient care and how to add some value added service, the quality assurance and protocolized di dialysis care, something about green dialysis, and then the conclusion. So for selecting the premises, it is a very important step for setting up the dialysis unit. You have to first decide where you want to locate your unit, which city, how, how is the population, whether the aging population is there or young population is there whether the feasibility for establishing the unit is there or not, whether the lift facility is there or not, how is the accessibility, whether it is near to the public transport system or road accessibility is there, the parking area is there for the uh, cars, water supply status, whether you have got a municipal water supply or boring water supply, what type of supply is there, whether the proper storage tank is there, whether enough water will you get it or not for the dialysis, how good is the electrical supply, whether the breakdown is there, whether the lot setting is there, power cut is there, and how much area is required. On an average, roughly, for each bed, you can have 100 square feet of area. So if you have got a 10 bed dialysis unit, you can think about having a 1,000 square feet area which can take care of your dialysis treatment area, water treatment area, and other area. So before, after locating the sites, you have to design the uh, plan. And plan depend upon the patient need, the dialysis staff needs, and the technical status. Patient, some of the patient need a privacy. So you have to provide the privacy. You can have a single room dialysis or isolation dialysis for the positive station. Some patient need a socialization with the other patient. So where you can have a curtain only, and that can be removed during the time of dialysis. You can have an internet access because some of the patients want to work on dialysis. You can provide the television and musical, uh, music player also. And uh, for the dialysis staff, then the nursing staff table, where the uh, nursing staff is sitting, they should see all the patients clearly. The, all the patients should have easy access to their bed. The ambience is there and the work station should have enough space in between the dialysis beds or in between the beds also uh, at, uh, through the passage where the wheelchair or trolley or things are moving around. The technical need is there, the enough light is there, the better is there, the no natural light should be there and the ventilation facility and the electrical fixture should be proper. Water and drain line access and door and corridor. Door is very important. If you have got a quadrangle area for your dialysis unit, the door should be in the middle of the dialysis unit. And the near the door, you can have a weighing machine. I will show you in next few slides. So the required area in the dialysis center, you have got a dialysis treatment area where the hemodialysis machine will be there. The procedure room, if you want to have some catheter to put the catheter or you can start your own vascular access clinic where you can make the fistula, you can make a procedure room slightly bigger than the putting up the catheter. You can have enough a store room because uh, uh, if you have got a 10 machine dialysis center, you are going to do 750 almost dialysis in a month to so 750 normal saline, the can of almost 250 can in a month. So all this required a good uh, store area. The dialyzer reprocessing room is also required a certain uh, space of 100 square feet where you can have at least uh, for a 10-bedded uh, dialysis unit, you should have a three sink or at least three automated 
the Alaja reprocessor. There should be some admin office. It is always better to consult the nephrology practice in your own hemodialysis unit. Patient always feel happy that my doctor is sitting here, my doctor comes every day for consultation. If I have got any problem, I can come and show it to him. So it is always better to have a consulting room in our dialysis unit. The staff room should be there where they can go and sit or relax or they can eat lunch. There should be a billing area, a reception area, and patient and visitor waiting area should have a TV and internet so that their movement in the dialysis unit will be lesser. And it is always better that you should provide a, such a facility that the visitor should be less in your dialysis unit rather than more. Because as a, more and more visitor will be there, they will always come inside and disturb in your practice or work. Now the space planning. Every bed is almost 6.5 feet by 3 feet. And the machine area is 2 feet of, uh, so each and every beds require almost 70 square feet of area. If you have got a two bed uh, in both the way, so six and a half or seven foot in each side and six foot in between. So if you have got a room of 20 by 20, you can have a two row. And in between the, uh, in between you can have a door. You can see here, uh, there are door and we have got a weighing a scale and nursing a station. Nursing a station a staff should see all the beds from here. The patient will come, they can take the weight, notify the weight here and they can go to the beds. These are the smaller center. The bigger center you can see here, the entry point you have got a uh, weighing, area, weighing machine and patient can allocate, uh, uh, nursing staff can allocate the bed and the patient can go to the beds. So here the distance traveled by the patient will be lesser as compared to if you put a door here. Then the, from this door uh, coming to another area will be a longer. So it is always better to place a door in such a way that the distance will be equally traveled for all the patients. You have to understand one more thing that during the shift change, at that time, if a 10 bedded unit is there, 10 patients will come in and 10 patients will go away from the dialysis unit and the relatives are also coming in and out. So there are a lot of traffic in your dialysis unit. So a lot of a space is required in between the beds. So these are the ideal dialysis unit where a lot of space is there. We are not privileged to get such facility in Mumbai. Now comes to the equipment required for the dialysis unit. We need a dialysis machine. Before taking any decision about dialysis machine, whether it is Freeginius, Nipro or A, you have to understand that what is your need? What type of dialysis you are going to provide? Whether you want to do a conventional dialysis or hemodiafiltration or expanded dialysis, depending upon that, you can choose the dialysis machine. Before choosing the dialysis machine, you have to think about whether that company is providing the service or not. If the company's service quality is very poor, even if that brand is best, you should not take that brand because after two to three years, some of the company will come, give you the lesser price, sell off their machine and go back. And after three years, you are having a machine without work. So before decision, you have to decide about service part. The reverse osmosis, osmosis plant design and capacity will discuss in next slide. The analyzer reprocessing machine is required, a weighing machine is required, voltage stabilizer. If you have got a load setting, the capacity of the voltage stabilizer and UPS, the generator set for a standby, autoclave machine and emergency equipment like defibrillator, suction machine, oxygen supply, pulse oximeter and AMBU bag. Now comes with electrical requirement. When you are deciding about electrical requirement, you have to think that multiple components are there. You have got a dialysis machine, you have got a water treatment plant, you have got a other equipment like autoclave machine or light and fixature or refrigerator, air conditioner. So electrical supply has to be equally distributed so that the current break should not be there. When the machine is going in hot disinfection, at that time the electrical requirement in the dialysis unit is maximum. And if you are doing a hot disinfection in all the machine together, the electrical surge will be there and at that time you may not get that much electrical supply and you can get a break or circuit breaker. 
Along with that, you have to, because the machine is too costly, we need to safeguard our machine, so we should have a voltage stabilizer or UPS so that the, any voltage fluctuation will not damage the machine. Because each and every, once the oversurge is there, sometimes the control panel may go off and one control panel is costing around 1.5 lakhs rupees. Maximum use of natural light will save you some of the money and you can use the LED light to save them some consumption. Comes to the electrical backup, we should have either a UPS system or DG set. When you are deciding about DG set, you have to decide that how much is the electrical load of our dialysis unit. On an average, if you see five to six kilo volt ampere of load is required for the dialysis unit. So if you have got a 10 better dialysis unit, you can calculate and you can have a DG set of 125 kVA. If you are having under, uh, if you are having a lesser KVA DG set, it will not fulfill your requirement. DG set should be having an auto on and off system so that whenever the electrical supply will go off, then the DG set will start uh, on his own and you should not get the break in the dialysis. Now the selection of the machine, you can choose the machine depending upon what you want to give. If you are giving a conventional dialysis, you have got an option of Freeginius, Nipro and B. Brown machine. You need to have a citrus sterilin endosuction filter for a Freeginius machine and other machine also required some hot disinfectant and cutoff filter. For hemodiafiltration, we have got a Freeginius 5008H. And for expanded dialysis, which can be done on conventional machine, but through the separate type, different type of superflux dialyzer like Theranova, and where we need to have a ultra pure water or double RO system and double endotoxin filter. Comes to the water treatment plant. Before designing water treatment plant, we have to see the quality of raw water, whether the water is coming from municipal corporation or whether the water is from bore well or ground water. Depending upon the water quality, you can design the water. How much is the water supply? Whether the water supply I will get is sufficient for running the 10 water dialysis in it or not? How good is the storage tank? If the storage tank is not sufficient, because you have to understand that in our country, water supply is not always uh, good. Sometimes in summer, you may not get that much of water supply, and in rainy season, you can get a bad quality of water. So water quality is also we have to look for. The water storage capacity and the water flow we have to know. A space and location for the water treatment system. Sometimes we can keep the water treatment system on the rooftop where the temperature is almost 46, 47 in Nagpur or in some places like Bihar where the temperature is a lot and we can have inefficient RO membrane because of the high temperature. So location is also very important for the water treatment system. The power supply is important because we need to have a three phase electrical supply for the water treatment system. And the water distribution loop I will discuss. You know that the multimedia depth filter, softener and carbon filter is required for pre-treatment part. Reverse osmosis is the, the treatment for removing the bacteria and endotoxin and the ions. And you will lights for killing the bacteria and ultra filter to remove the bacteria and endotoxin. Before designing, because we have to understand that in our country, the RO plant is supplied by the big company who is not very keen for supplying to the uh, dialysis unit or a supply by the small company who is just interested in making the money. So we have to know what are the component and what good is the component. Raw water analysis is many times not done before designing the RO plant. It is very important to design your RO plant after doing a raw water analysis because your raw water has got high conductivity, high minerals. Then you have to have extra softener. If your water quality is having more chlorine because of the municipal supply, you have to have a double carbon tank. So depending upon the water analysis report, you can design your RO. In our country, we have got a very poor maintenance record, and that is the reason majority of the RO, even if they are there working, but they are not working so, uh, optimally. So we need to have a water quality assessment through physical and chemical purity, microbiological and endotoxin purity. So we need to monitor this with the daily activity, weekly and monthly activity. We all know that the TDS hardness conductivity can be managed 
every day. The backwash and rinsing should be done every day. And monthly, the RO disinfection and bacteriological testing should be done. Endotoxin testing is costly. That can be done monthly, but it is, it can be done monthly, but the quarterly is okay. And water chemical analysis should be done at least six monthly. Regarding the water storage tank, whether you want or not, because it all depends upon your water supply status. If you have got enough water, you can make a RO online. If you are not having enough water, uh, if the water supply is not regular, then you can have a SS tank, which should be conical downward so that the water should not stagnate. It should have an airtight fitting lids, and uh, that lids along with that, you should have a 0 0.2 micron hydrophobic air filter. It is important that after storage tank, you should have a UVB ultraviolet filter uh, lamp and followed by ultra filtration so that we can take care of endotoxin produced by ultraviolet radiation. The distribution piping should not leach. Leaching means the materials from the pipe should not go to the RO water and it can affect the dialysis quality. The band T and dead space should be minimum there should not be any dead space or corner so that the stagnation of water and bacterial growth should not be there because at that site you can have a slim layer. The piping should not be interested. Uh, this is very important that the distribution, distribution piping should not be done by the local plumber. It should be done by the plumber who is knowing the what we want. So a very good expensive water treatment system can be run by a bad piping system. So design is very critical and it should not be interested to a wild uh, household plumber. Long stagnation period of water in a dialysis unit is a critical problem for having a poor dialysis quality. You can see here there is no bend and you can have a SS316 push-pull connector here. That push-pull connector where the, uh, if you see the blind end is not that big, it's a very small end, and you have got a push-pull connector here. If you are having a long loop or blind loop, you can develop a slim layer because of the longer stagnation of water, and that may be the source of endotoxin in your dialysis. The drain line is also, designing the drain line is also very important. The drain line tip should not touch the drain, main drain, piping because if you are touching the main drain piping the drain main drain contaminants can go back to the machine when the flooding is there so it is always better to keep one inch gap between the drain line tip and the main drain line you can see here it is just hanging not touching down inside you can have a better place in abroad I have seen this where you can have a drain also in push pull way now comes to the consumable emergency medicine and material required in the dialysis unit. You required a dialyzer and blood tubing, A part, B part, all you are aware of. Emergency tray should have adrenaline, aminophylline, avil, hydrocord, dexa, and other medicine. The blanket, linen, bedsheet, towel, surgical gown, all should be required. And for cleaning, you need a floor cleaner, toilet, and a cleaner and all. Staff required for dialysis unit, you need a, a nephrologist to run the department. You need a duty doctors who can take care of the daily uh, uh, problem with the patient. You need a dietitian to counsel about the dietis, diet part in the dialysis, the dialysis technician, the nurse, dialysis assistant who can help in giving the treatment, and the social worker who can take care of some of the social aspect of patient, cleaner, housekeeping, and you need an accountant who can look after the billing and accounts part. It's very important to have a, a staff training modules, which is called continuous dialysis education, where you can train the staff to implement your SOP in your dialysis unit to have good quality care. You can have a vascular access module, infection control modules, or dialysis procedure module Emergency re response and CPR training should be done to all the staffs. The professional development, how to talk with the patient and the relative, how much loose talk you should not do. 
in your dialysis unit is very important. So professional development models and documentation and record keeping, all this should be the part of monthly training in the dialysis unit. Before starting a dialysis unit, you should have a market analysis reports where you want to start the dialysis, how, be, how is the population, whether that population is the young population or the aging population. If the population is aging, that means number of dialysis patients will be more in that area. How is the prevalent of diabetes, diabetes and hypertension? And if you can able to get the exact number, how many patients in that area are going outside and away from that area, then that will give you a rough idea whether the market for dialysis is there or not. And you should also see about your competitor, whether the other dialysis unit is there in that area, how is the pricing in that dialysis unit, how is the patient volume, whether that center is empty in spite of providing a good quality. If that center is empty and if you are starting a dialysis unit, that means whether you will have a full capacity or not, that is a big question mark. The quality is very important in your dialysis. How to reduce the cost? It is another area because in dialysis is high volume, low cost, low margin area of your income. So optimum utilization of machine is very important. If you have got a 10 bedded unit, you can uh, start with five beds, have three shift full, then add one machine each so that machine optimization should be there. You should avoid the wastage of the consumable. You can manage the manpower in such a way that the one staff should do at least three dialysis in each shift, so that the six dialysis should be done by each staff. The minimizing the breakdown and repair cost. It is very important to have a good quality uh, disinfection. By having a good quality disinfection, you can maintain the machine for long period of time. And if you are having a three monthly maintenance, repair maintenance, then your machine life will be more and you can save money. The requirement for licensing is Medical Establishment Act, Biomedical Waste Management License is required to be authorized by Pollution Control Board. There should be a MOU with the vendor for supply of consumable. The no objection certificate is required from the fire department. If you want an ambulance, the ambulance commercial vehicle permit is required, driving license and PUC is also required. If you are starting in a buildings, the building completion certificate, lift license for each lift, DG set approval, all these are required. Medical gas license, if you have got a central gas supply, or explosive act if you are supplying from the central oxygen. Clinical establishment act registration if applicable should be taken. MOU or agreement with the outsource human research agency for housekeeping a staff or anything. If you are taking up on contractual work, then you can have an MOU. The provident fund, ESI, GST, PAN, all these are required for your dialysis unit. So before uh, starting a dialysis unit, you can have a checklist like this, where you can have civil work completed, tick mark, electrical work, furniture work, premises cleaning, RO installation, loop line disinfection, the machine installation, machine electrolyte, the RO water analysis, dialysis consumable are ready or not, the software is already installed, internet connection, phone connection, staff training, reprocessing, room fitting, dialysis form and stationery, office stationery, all should be there before uh, starting the dialysis unit. <laughs> now two more slides, uh, two, three. Uh, patient care and value added service you can have. Uh, you can have a transportation facility. You can have a dialysis, uh, dialysis patient rehabilitation or dietitian consultation and counseling. The concept of green dialysis is coming up because you know that there is average 0.8 degrees centigrade increase in the temperature, global temperature in last 50 years. And you are also aware that each patient get 156 dialysis treatment in a year and almost consuming 62,400 water, liter of water. Almost 187 kilo 
gram of waste generated through the dialysis and 1872 kva of electricity consumed so we have to do something to go green and decrease this carbon consumption so in water treatment you can make certain changes to recycle the water you have to cut down the rejects so that the permeate should be more and reject should be less you can re reuse the reject in some other works like washing cloth and all and you have to avoid the wastage of water you can see some of the dialysis you need the staff can keep the dialyzer with the tap water continuously going on for half an hour and after lunch they are coming back and doing the reprocessing so all this wastage should be cut down in the electricity you can use a solar plant you can put on the rooftop you can use as much as natural light so that you can avoid the electricity consumption in the daytime you should have a motion sensor in the low traffic area and air conditioner should be run in 24 to 26 degree centigrade in the waste management you have to segregate the waste you can recycle paper and glass and it is always better to have a digitalized system so that the paper use should be less so if you are running a good quality dialysis we need a protocol why we need because the high volume industry lot of risk are involved it is problem prone high cost recurrent recurring expenses are there the dialysis provider are always accountable for the quality and at present we are not having accreditation agency which are demanding the standardization but it will come patient awareness is available on a click on the google so we have to have a patient care minimum three times in a week dialysis more patient to be on high flux middle flux or single use dialysis there should be a periodic blood check diet consultation and we should have a maximum number of patient on av fistula and there should be a continuous dialysis education the in the patient care we can have a appropriate heparin dose to avoid the overburden of the heparin there should be a periodic clinical quality audit the continuous education for the patient also all the patients should be vaccinated and the staff should also get the vaccination and antibody checked in the ro care you should have a best quality and best brand for the ro parts like a pump should be from ground force brain membrane should be from film tech the contact part from the ss316l and the ultraviolet light from the light source there should be a dual mechanism so that we should not be having a failure because dialysis the water treatment plant is the very important component so in conclusion site selection and architectural designing should be done considering the patient and the staff requirement equipment should selection should not only based on the best brand but also about the quality of the maintenance service storage tank and distribution piping should be done in such a way to avoid the stagnation and the bacterial growth the continuous electric and water supply and backup are important component and a staff training is must to reinforce protocolized dialysis care thank you yeah thank you very much for your elaborate discussion but uh, for everybody i think uh, there is uh, elaborate discussion but don't afraid of things uh, though it is a very complicated things and very simple guideline came in uh, also i send a website how to make a uh, dialysis unit what was actually the uh, protocol and uh, some issues uh, actually i just want to add on this because when you will do dialysis some issues will be there one thing is what is a protocol for the hepatitis b c and hiv there will be a reuse of the dialyzer third part that is is a surveillance because nowadays there is a software there from one centers you can monitor your other uh, multiple centers by the software and though uh, it is uh, in uh, initial days pradhan mantri yojana is there so there is a funding part is also available if you really want to uh, establish the hemodialysis in a such uh, area or such remote area so where there is a funding is a really problem so they can help uh, only the things you have real uh, uh, show a good will to do for the community uh, as of now, as he's mentioned very clearly, there's no accreditation process. So anyone or everyone is starting their own uh, dialysis unit and uh, without probably looking at the quality parameters, which are extremely important to provide an efficient and safe dialysis. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, I think ISN and uh, Dr. Kher and others have given this, pro uh, you know, uh, 
whole uh, supplement on how to establish your dialysis unit and uh, sir has almost replicated it. Uh, but I think what is important is to, uh, is to understand the need for uh, the, uh, all, uh, the new dialysis center is there or not. I was staying in a very, very remote area. I tried my best to establish center, but unfortunately most of the uh, standalone dialysis centers said that the economically it, it will not be viable. So we need to understand, and uh, I think we'll conclude a very, very extensive uh, presentation. Thank you. Thanks, sir, for such an informative